Good evening. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. <clears throat> Today is September the 2nd, and it is 2021. The topic for this evening is spiritual sovereignty. So um, before, before I started uh, um, this, this, this recording, we were actually having some conversation about what's going on. And, <clears throat> and so what's been happening um, in my hometown of, hometown of uh, Toronto is that yesterday the, the nurses who are um, just protesting mandatory vaccination, mm -hmm. so they walked off their job. The, the ones that are protesting anyways, not all of them. So they protest, they were protesting the mandatory vaccination. So um, they walked off their job. And today the, the police department uh, actually are doing their walkout as well. So that is happening. And at the backdrop of that, um, yesterday I found out about the our um, mayors announced that there's going to be a vaccine passport for non-essential indoor public places um, that will be in effect <clears throat> September the 22nd. So not, not too far, another, another just shy of two, three weeks. So we are all witnessing some form of that um, at, so where no matter where you are when you're listening to this, as long as you are, um, so, so there will be similar things going on, maybe more, more extent or to a lesser extent that you'll be experiencing some sort of this. All eyes are really on vaccination. So a lot is happening in the world right now. <clears throat> And uh, you have to excuse me because I have a little bit of um, a little bit of um, allergies coming on. So, so then, so all of this was happening yesterday, and a lot of things happened yesterday, and a lot of things happened today. But um, like as as I was writing this this morning. And I was um, just just checking inside my body, just checking within. And so when I was just checking in with myself, so my mind was telling me that I need to worry because I have to do this, I have to move, I have uh, to um, go through, like, see if like um, how I may be impacted or not by this um, new vaccine passport and all that. So all that was going through my mind. And then when I just steer away from my mind and just check in with my body and, and also just connect with my soul and connect with... Um, my heart and and just I would say sink into my body I actually access and felt a it's like a blanket of calmness that's settling in my body and um so I actually all the turmoil seems to be in my mind and when I left my mind I really feel that um, it's going to be okay and I can say this because human beings um, at least at least um, I would say those of us who are aware enough awake enough to to really start to do the work of embodying what, what the fifth dimension um, energy, the organic matrix, or I should say the, the organic um, oh, 
matrix is, I, I'm trying to find another word for what matrix is. It's really the operating system. So it's really about how our body works at an energetic level. So when we are able to tap into and really um, get our body in, in tune with the organic operating system of earth, then you would be able to access this more calmness in your body. And, and I'm not trying to say this um, to, to make it like one more thing that we have to measure up to. I'm just suggesting that we, we actually have tools that we can use. So will these will the this tool be able to um, cancel out all the intense fear inducing scenarios that's coming up? Maybe, maybe not. It really depends on how much attention you pay to the what's going on outside of you. How much attention are you paying? to the um, social media? How much attention are you paying to what other people are telling you? Because I'm pretty sure that if you, if you, if you live in your head, if you live in your mind for the time being, for the next, um, well, probably for the next 18 months or so, or, or maybe less. At the very least, uh, for the next um, five months, it's going to be fairly intense. Um, that's because what's happening now is, is that um, there's a lot of push to convince us that um, there's something to be, to be feared. There are something that we need to worry about, that we need to feel insecure in our being. So that's what's being offered. But um, there's also when you let go of that, of that conversation, those, those, I, I call those offerings. Those are really um, stories that other people are telling. When you let go of all those um, stories and you really um, allow yourself to check in with your body and really disengage from the, the fight or flight scenario and, and really just ground yourself to yourself, um, then you are able to tap into this different energetic grit, energetic um, that is completely different. It's actually very high vibrational. There is a lot of... Um, it's a lot of excitement, but it's excitement in terms of it's a good excitement in that this is new. All this energy is new and our body is, has not really encountered these, these high vibrational energies for a very long time. So our body is actually going on a very different journey and, and, we may somehow confuse the two that the um, the excitement we felt in our, our body, we may misinterpret it as being something that is triggered by fear or insecurity. It's, it's actually our body is being triggered by, by the energies. The energies is actually pushing out whatever it is that's not resonating with our organic makeup. So all of these artificially engineered thought patterns doesn't quite match us 
anymore. And, and if you really are paying attention to yourself, then you would have noticed that you are being called to, to live a little differently. So what I experienced it as being is that I, I don't need as much food anymore. I actually needed to drink a lot more water. And um, so water is, is a, our body is like 70, 80% water any, anyways. But because I don't have, I don't feel the need to eat as much. I, I still eat, but just not as much. It's, it's like my body would feel um, it enough that, oh, okay, I've, I, it's um, like this, this, this amount of food is already enough. And I don't feel the, the, the hunger as much anymore and even when I feel hungry it is a different level of hunger it's something that is just very easily satiated um, all I may need to do is maybe have some fruit or or just um, have some have a glass of water so that would be enough so it's it's really a time that we all if you really want to make a shift is to start to listen to your body because your body is actually assisting you um, and, and um, giving you the clues that how to detox itself because your body has taken in um, a lot of things that has not agreed with it. And also, um, even if you have been very conscientious in keeping a clean diet, it is just that as um, unless you live in a, a very controlled environment, like just going out into um, city streets, there's a lot of toxins that you are you are soaking in, breathing in. And so your body is really going through detoxing of those. So that's why water is, is really important to your body now. And also, um, it's really about turning in because your body is, is showing you where in your body you are there are still things trapped in your body that needed to leave. And, and now it's actually much easier for things to, to let go of things. Um, I find that I don't really have to go to, um, you know, buy, buy some cleansing uh, or, or uh, different cleanses from health food store anymore just actually drinking really good water and i mean really good water so um good water would be if it is um distilled water that would be good water especially if you put in so what i've been doing is actually um, drinking water that has sauce seeds it's it's um it's a bio photon um it, it creates biophotons, those, those sorts, source seeds, they are called source seeds. And biophotons is really life force energy. So I've just been putting the, um, the, those source seeds in my water and just charging the water that I'm taking in to have more life force energy. And just, just doing that, it's already a great detox. And also, um, I have been uh, adopting this new detox routine is, um, I think Jason Estes taught this, it's very simple. It's four glasses, takes four glasses of water. So you boil the water and so first glass of water is 
you just um, after you have some hot water, you just put in a pinch of salt, and you wait until it is um, cool down enough that you can drink it, and you drink it. And then the next one would be um, hot water, and you just put a little bit of of sugar in it, just a pinch, and then you repeat another. Um, glass with a pinch of salt, and then the fourth one with a pinch of sugar. So those those four glasses of water, because of the the change in the polarity between the salt and the sugar, so that actually starts to trigger your body's own um, detox mechanism. And and I find that that really helped my uh, help my, my my kidneys actually my kidneys have been feeling better now and especially these times when there is a lot of anxiety and and fear that's being pumped out into um into social media and all that um it's anything that can help your kidney with that will be great so all of these i've been talking about is it's really a um the body detoxing and the the topic this evening it's about spiritual sovereignty so um i talked about the body first because the body is really the container for our spirituality for our um soul for our mental body for our emotional body so it is you have to support your your physical body first and then when you know that the physical body so pay attention to what your physical body is needing everyone is different you your body's need will may be different from mine and you may require a different kind of detox protocol than mine so you know your body best so try out different things with your own body the the intention is that is to start to assist your body in um, detoxing all the environmental toxins and also all the um, when we start to talk about how to detox your own mental um fixation and all those things then those because your mental and your emotional body is still um requires the physical body to get to move through those energy so really support your body first and get to know your body um very very gently to do to do this and then the next i would like to talk about um, spiritual sovereignty so definition of what sovereignty is sovereignty is really about authority meaning that we when you are sovereign it means that you are your own authority and spiritual authority is um it's really to know it's to instead of just focusing on the the material sovereignty part of it is is to talk is to really focus on the energetic and the 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 sovereignty of your own soul of your own non-physical part of you the sovereignty part of that so it's being your own sovereignty of your own soul and i am using soul and i'm including both the the earth soul and the cosmic soul as well so we have been we lived through um the last at least the last maybe 12,000 years of a period of time when we have become increasingly dissociated from our own authority until um, I would say if you if you really look out in the 
in the world right now, um, there's very little support to claiming your own authority. It's all about other people trying to um, pull authority over you. So we have been trained to give authority to our parents, to our teachers, to basically anyone that's older than you, and also basically um, any, I would say, organization that is that has more people than you. So it means just about any organization, especially government, uh, governmental organizations is trying to tell you that you have no authority. The, the government is actually doing a very good job at um, taking authority away from us. It's so that is really the role they have been playing and they are really playing this role very well, um, especially lately. I mean, they, they've been playing that role all along. It's just that they've been doing it very subtly so that you don't really recognize the, what they are all about. But um, it's, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, 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 I'm not really trying to say that, you know, your parents are bad people, that you, they somehow, um, their authority is, is really bad and that they, that is toxic. Um, that's not what I mean by that. I'm just saying that um, when you were young, your parents have the, it's really taking over the role of you um, in trying to give you the, their, their knowledge of what is going to um, assist you in being able to play in this reality. So they did, they did that out of love for you. It is just that at some point in your life, you are supposed to be able to get to the point where you start to take back that authority. And you are the one that needs to sift through all the things that your parents or other authority figures that you have looked up to in the past and sift through all the things that they have told you all from their own experience, whether from um, out of love they're sharing it to you, with you, or whether there are ulterior motives. Um, no matter what their motives are, at some point in your life, what we are supposed to do as a, as a soul, as a spiritual sovereign, is we need to sift through all of that and start to look at each one of those nuggets of wisdom that has been shared with us, whether they still have a place in our, in our soul or not, whether they still have a, a place in our way of thinking or not. And I, and that's something that we're supposed to do. It is, it is just that not very many people have ever done that. Um, and so now more than ever, I am suggesting that each and every one of us needed to do that, especially because there is now a big change over because the um, 
an old paradigm is has is done is finished and and this old paradigm um has created the reality that you see in the world in this moment for better or for worse that is that's what we have created and um however that movie has ended so now we're at the the beginning of a very new movie of a very new times and and i'm so what we are doing is we are moving away from the the third dimension or the third density and we're moving to the fourth density we're moving to the fifth dimension and it's the fourth density and so they I won't, because I have already um, talked about the difference between dimensions and density in a previous podcast, so I'm I'm not going to repeat that. It is just that the fifth dimension, the rules in the fifth dimension, is very different from the rules in the the third dimension. So we are learning a totally new set of of rules now and that set of rules is something that we can feel that we if we use our heart if we connect with our soul with both our earth soul and our cosmic soul when we connect to that we will get the download it's not something that can be downloaded to us. I may be able to share with you what I'm doing is I'm sharing with you what I have um, I have experienced from it. However, it is just my sharing. Each and every one of you who listens to this, whether in this moment or whenever it is that you listen to this, you have to take what I say with a grain of salt and you still have to do your own work. You still have to do your own work to tune into your own soul. All parts of your soul tune in with your own body and do that process Mm -hmm. as well. Do that process of looking at each and every bit of information that has ever been passed on to you from outside of you to decide whether you still resonate with that or not. Because the fifth dimension is about living from that, living from your soul, resonating with your soul and your body is really the instrument for you to ground that in, for mm-hmm. you to experience the this reality. And so because we we are just in the in between now. So we the 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 old the old paradigm is is just the the energetic support of that has just been cut off. And the the sub- energetic support for the new density for the new dimension is turned on. It's been turning on for it's been turned on for a while now. It's just that um, for for I would say up until fairly recently, the 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 energy still supported the old paradigm, but that the energetic support for that is now totally cut. It's now, there's only support for fifth dimension. So in the fifth dimension, everything has to be, you have to tune into your heart. You have to be your own authority. You have to grow up spiritually. 
And that's why um, there is this in-between period where we are being supported. A lot of energies is hitting us to assist us in growing. And that's why even the, um, the old paradigm is now actually supporting us to grow that part of us now because the, the old paradigm is still pumping out what the old paradigm is about. And if you look at the, um, if you look outside now, you will be confused. You will fall into fear. You will feel insecure. If you try to use your intellect, if you try to use logic to understand it, if you try to argue with all the, the, the arguments that, that you can understand from being um, trained in the old paradigm, it's not going to work. It really is going to be a disservice. You still have to do the work. And it's, and what do I mean by doing the work? It's, it's really, um, for example, just something very, very simple that I've mentioned is food. Food is a big program absolutely big program and we have been programmed with certain kinds of food giving us a certain feeling and that i i hear so much that people say that oh i'm i'm eating like i remember even for myself i love to eat congee because for me congee is something that i only get to eat on the weekends as i was growing up my my mom would make kanji for us only on the weekends because on the weekends we don't have to rush to school and it's there's no rush so kanji for me um is is this feeling of leisure and really enjoying a um a weekend so that is comfort food so all of these things that we've been called comfort food, um, it's, I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm just saying that you need to check in with your own body. Thus, those comfort food still resonate with your body because in this new energy, food that once used to comfort you may not be working for you anymore. You have to start to create your own food program. So the way I did it is I actually go back and intentionally um, go and eat the food that I used, that used to really give me a certain feeling. And I really have to go in and eat it again and sift through those feelings and really um, figure out if I still, why do I have those feelings? What is those feelings giving me? What, what do I get out of those? And whether those feelings are still things that... I give pow my power out to. And if I really am okay with giving my power over to that food. And you have to have that conversation with yourself. As I had that conversation with myself, I have to go and revisit those things. I remember recently, I actually, because I had been... Um, really not, I have not eat um, 
meat for, a, um, I would say, well, not eat meat, but uh, I'm still a pescatarian. I eat seafood, but I have not eaten chicken or, or beef or pork, those for, I would say, close to two years now. Um, so I recently actually deliberately went out, bought a chicken and really sat down and I didn't, I didn't eat the whole, whole chicken in one sitting, but I actually really give myself a chance to eat the chicken, but eat it without any sort of judgment, without thinking, because my, for myself, my own reason for not eating meat or getting away from eating meat is that um, I've heard that there are certain um, species of, of aliens who have been in the background controlling us. They actually eat human beings. And I was horrified. And that's why I decided to, to steer away from eating animal meat because I cannot really um, have that moral high ground if I am also eating some other species, then I cannot say I cannot um, I cannot say that those that I am better than those people, the the other species that decided to eat us for um, their pleasure. So that was that was my my reason for staying away from from meat and i actually revisited that and i actually got to the point where you know what that you know i don't resonate with that that choice anymore i don't want to do something because i want to be able to um be in a moral high ground. I want to get to the point where I don't judge the, the people, the, the, the species that wants to eat us. I don't want to judge them. I want to get to neutral point. And when I get to neutral, then I would actually, I actually when I got to neutral, I went out and I bought a chicken and I ate a chicken a um, little bit at a time. And I really, really took my time to see, is this something that I want to continue doing? Not because um, of any whatever reason that, that I had before, but just is this something that resonate with me, with my body, with my soul? and made that choice from that point of neutrality. So that's what I am going through now. So that's what I've been doing. And I'm also going through each and every one of my, um, I would say, previous relationship, whether it is with um, friends of the opposite sex or friends of the same sex is going through each of those relationship and and get at what did I learn from those relationship and really reprocess everything. So that's what I've been doing because I know that this is what needed to happen in order to get myself ready for the fifth dimension to get to the point where um, I am moving from that point of stillness from my own soul and not from ideas that I have adopted from someone else, whether the, that someone else is from a benevolent point of view or from a um, less than benevolent point of view is it's it's not about that it's 
part of the ways that I am being called to do this process because that's how that's what I needed to go through in order to get to neutral is to actually do the the work and then um meaning that I release all the emotional attachments that I can think of. So release all the emotional attachments, the internal dialogue until I I feel I'm neutral enough. And then I go back and do something. And uh, for example, do something like eat a chicken and then really decide for myself, is that something that I... I still want to partake in without um, the labels. The labels are, I'm a vegetarian, I am a pescatarian, I am a whatever. So, so those labels is labels are also from a different, um, from the previous dimension as well. So the previous dimension is also about polarities. So mm, black and right uh, and white, good and bad, right and wrong, all of those, those are also platforms and for the third dimension. And the fifth dimension is not about that. It's about... really getting to know your own soul, really getting to know who you are with all these um, new energies that's really activating ourselves. So for me, that's what spiritual sovereignty is about, is to to let go of needing to be right, to let go of needing to be anything. When you need to be a certain thing, when you need to when you think that that is what it is and you have to stand on that you have to fight for that and you have to put that stick in the ground then you know that you're still playing in the third dimension when you get to the part where you know who you are you really tap into your soul you you're not attached to what's happening outside anymore that you can start to put the the spotlight back on yourself, not from an egotistical point of view, but spiritually is to trust yourself, to trust that you um, you are already the the creator because you have been creating all of these experiences for yourself you so it's just that you've been creating all these experiences um, with other people's script with hand-me-downs some um, beliefs all of that so you can create that's that's who you are you, that's your nature now it's about letting go of all those things letting go of other people telling you that you need to work nine to five or however long Mm -hmm. in order to make um in order for money to come in actually you don't that's just an idea that's just a a reality that has been repeated so many um, for so many thousands of years that we have adopted it as reality as what's real it is not 
I have actually experienced um, times when all I have to do is think of money, think that, okay, I need some money in order to, let's say, um, you know, go, go buy a, a new computer, for example, and then, and I just have to float that idea out and I have someone offer to get me a, a new computer. So like they didn't give me the money, but they, they gave, they, they, they tell me that they're going to buy me the, the new computer. So we are so, um, condition that in order to have something that we need money but actually no we don't money is just one of the ways that we can um, put a roof over our head or put food on the table it's one of the ways it's not the only way you are the creator you can create and it's just that we have not been, we've been so conditioned that there is only certain channels of, of ways to get food on the table, to have a roof over our head, that we forgot that we are infinite creator when we can free our mind, then all these other possibilities can come in. When we get to the part where we can let go of our, the, the clutches that we've been, that we've been attached to, then all these other infinite possibilities can start to come in. And that's what we, that's, that's where we are going. And for now, that's, that's, for now though, we have to do that work. We have to do the work of opening our own mind and letting go of what we think of as being, as what we what it is that we need. And really get to understand ourselves from the beginning to to, to, to actually trust ourselves, trust, especially trust our soul. The, the, um, the soul, our soul is taking us on a journey. And whether we go with our soul, um, whether we go with our soul, I would say whether we actively go with our soul, or not, our soul is taking us on a journey. And if we actively do the work, that journey can actually be joyful and fun. Um, and whether you, and um, so my, my suggestion is to start to let go of what you think of as being necessary. S start to, to really let go of what comfort means to you because your senses, what you think of as being comfortable is is actually something that is passed down. It may or may not be what's actually comfortable. 
for you as a soul being. It may be comfortable because that's what you have grown up with. And um, coming back to being the, the spirits, being spiritually, spiritual sovereignty, it's, it's the work that if we want to move on to fifth dimension, organic fifth dimension, that's the work that each of us has to do. And um, your soul already has made that choice. And I'm quite sure that you kind of know what your soul's choice is by now. So now is the time to, with when the energy is so supportive, is to trust your soul, trust yourself. Don't trust me, don't trust the government, don't trust scientists, don't trust anyone else. Trust yourself and let go of all your preconceived ideas of what reality needed to be and start to explore like a child as though this is the first day, the first year that you have come on this planet and trust your soul to learn from the ground up what really resonates with your soul and be okay to, to disagree with other people because it's where we're going in fifth dimension. Um, you get to be your own boss. It's, it's not about being right anymore. You don't have to be right. It's about being you. And when you are you, then, and everyone else is being themselves. And we all also understand that there is no right, there is no wrong. There is only individual preferences and we actually get to find the people that resonate with um, our preferred resonance and we can start to find the people that resonate with us and, and co-create and play with them and the ones that don't resonate so much with us, they're not wrong. It's just that they are not your playmates. And, then, and there are so many playmates out there that um, we can each find the group where we actually would be able to play as ourselves, as our true selves, and be able to co-create something that is, has never been done before, that it's, that's how we create this new movie. That's how we create the fifth dimension is that we have the understanding that no one is right, no one is wrong. We are all individuals and we all playing together in this one reality. And this one shared reality is big enough for all the differences. And it's small enough so that we can find the people that, um, that finds our differences unique and cute and wants to snuggle up with us and play with us. So that's what the fifth dimension is about. And this is actually all I want to um, talk about. 
spiritual sovereignty, it, it starts with you having to start to trust yourself. No need to look for other people to agree with you. Give yourself the, the room to agree with yourself. When you agree with yourself, when you trust yourself, then no matter what other people do, you will always be able to get back up again, no matter what happens. Um, fifth dimension does not mean that there will be no challenges, does not mean that there will be no setbacks, no disappointments. All of those things may still happen. But when you have you, when you go from your soul, when you have your own back, no matter what happens, you would be able to get back on your own feet. You would be able to create what it is that you need in the moment. You would be able to call on and attract just the right playmates that will assist you in co-creating your preferred reality. And that's all what the, the fifth dimension is about. And um, so first thing first, get to know yourself from the ground up again. That's what spiritual sovereignty is about. And that's the first step. That's all I have to say. <laughs>